Hello, this is Dr. Fang Meido from Tiffin University. Welcome for the uh, social psychology lecture. This is conformity part four. I'm so glad to have this chance to share with you about this topic. Okay, even this is actually for the Tiffin University student. Uh, who are taking my uh, social psychology class. But, well, now, because coronavirus, we have to stay home. So then I got a good reason to learn how to make this YouTube. And so I uh, post in here for public. So if anybody you are interested in learning social psychology, hopefully, hopefully you find this lecture is helpful. Okay, so then uh, this chapter we talk about conformity. And as we know from part one, part two, and part three, we talk about, you know, even a lot of time we emphasize we have to build up our own strengths, our own self assertiveness, right? But then um, in quite a few situations, we find ourselves have tendency to follow people and we call it a conformity, right? And we talk about two, one is we call informational social inference, right? That means when you are in the situation, you are not so sure, you know, when, the, when they are crisis, you know, when they have expert there, then you will tend to follow them, right? If you don't know, if you don't know a right answer or Sometimes actually you kind of know answer, but you still decide to follow. Then let's come to our second type called uh, normative social inference because you want to be accepted, right? That's what we talk about um, for those three parts. And we also talk about, you know, the different culture, you know, they have a different norm about body shape, right? And but because the global village now, sometimes we see people from other culture, we thought that's called pretty, right? And then we also talk about, but remember the, the, how important this group relate to you, they also influence how strong you are, you are going to follow their idea, right? If they are uh, your family, your best friend, you know, then you, 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 will, you want, make them happy. So even whatever their idea, not is your idea, you still follow, right? Or, you know, if the, the size about four to five in that group, usually it's um, very easy. Everybody have the same meaning, same answer when they are work together for so long, right? Okay. And then in here we talk about gender can be a factor they also influence uh, conformity, right? And <clears throat> actually, based on our uh, stereotype or something, we believe, you know, actually female actually conform with other people maybe more than uh, men. And that this research is show men are less formed to uh, show the influence by other people than, than women, okay? But it's very interesting here, talk about, you know, some, some research around this gender difference, actually they have a very different result there. And then one research here, one very interesting, only the male researcher, male researcher were more likely than female researcher to find that men were less inference. Very interesting, right? So, well, keep, if you are interested, keep work on more research. Maybe you find something, a new idea or new result. Okay. Now, when we want to resist the normative social inference, okay, um, how do you make sure you won't be inference if you don't want to be okay first of all just be aware okay 
that is a, you know, they have dynamic there, right? And since we already learned how and why, you know, you get inference or people get inference, so you know that aware that is an operating. Okay, so like somebody try to do something to influence you or environment. So if you're aware of this theory, maybe you're more likely to to help yourself able to resist, right? And then um, if you don't want to follow, you may want to take action. Can You can say, you know, if everybody just so strongly say something and you really have your own voice, you may want to like uh, say something or try to find a friend. Okay, Ellen, Ellen, all right. Try to find somebody you kind of feel that person maybe have similar idea like you. So you say it. And then when, when you say it, and people may maybe more like say, I'm glad you say that because we are afraid to say that. Okay. And it's very interesting when I try to do that, always I use my own background as excuse. Okay. Like I, I work for the majority is uh, American people. And but sometimes I have my voice because I'm from different culture. I don't want offensive them so i will say well can i can just be asian for now and then i say something based on my asian point of view and actually i find quite often if i say that they appreciate because people may like to hear some uh different voice there and of course you know Sometimes they tell me, you are so brave. How do you know? How, how can you dare to say it? I said, well, I'm Asian, <laughs> right? I grow up from different place. So then um, if I'm willing to share, actually they like to hear, right? So that is take action, right? Another one is uh, actually if you are so conform and then in people's eye you are pretty much a good kid a good people a good friend then once a while if you even not follow you may not have any consequence people may forgive you because you used to be very good okay so you know if you can follow you know follow your friend you know be nice to them and then if one time or two time or sometimes you really feel like you really want to be your way, you can do it. You can say they will be okay with you. But then, of course, if you're always against other people all the time, then people may put you on the side and say, well, you are hard to work with. So here, say, you know, if you are follow quite often, then once in a while, you should be okay. Okay, and actually they have a term there called endosequency uh, credit. Endosequency credit. What's that mean? It's just what we just said. You know, if you are, uh, they, people all tolerant, you know, the tolerance a person earn over time by conforming to group norm if enough in the uh, sequency credit are earned, the person can, uh, can on occasion behave uh, differently without uh, in uh, re retribu uh, retribution uh, from the group. So one time, one of my students actually, um, she always go home, you know, during the weekend or when she got a chance, she always go home. But then one time, she really cannot go home because she have an exam, she have a lot of assignment. And then I asked her, are you okay? Is your parent won't be, won't be upset if you not go home this time? She said, I think they'll be fine. I go home all the time. I went home all the time. So they know I have good heart, right? So that is important concept, right? So uh, I mean, if you don't have to be against other people then just be a good person and then when then if you earn enough credit then then you can get excuse right does that make sense 
。OK， 好包 minority， we always feel like only majority can get a power。好包 minority， can minority have an influence power to other people？ Well， answer is yes。Answer is yes. Here say, people with minority view must express the same view over time. So if you are so insist share your idea, you know, again and again and again, people are going to hear your voice. Okay. So don't just underestimate. And say, well, we only a few people here. I don't think people care. Well. If you express the same view over time, if you are so consistent yourself, you are going to end the power because people are going to hear the voice. Okay, um, and then again, if a different member of the minority, if they are not agree with each other, then it's hard for people to hear you because you're not even. Agree with yourself among yourself, right? Okay. Now this have a two norms there that is very interesting uh, research here, and then so we can think about if that true or not. Okay, they have a two norm. One is called inject in in uh injunctive norms. Injunctive norm is mean they assume. They they assume people will do what they supposed to, regardless environment. That's called injunctive. No, for example, if you know you supposed not to throw the garbage, no matter where you are, no matter the place is clean or the place have garbage everywhere, you still keep your own principle. You won't throw garbage. Okay, you want leaders, and this called injunctive norms. Okay. Another one called descriptive norms. Descriptive norms it mean how people behave really depend on the situation. Depend on the situation. So you know, and we say you're not supposed to throw away the garbage. You supposed to keep the place clean, okay? But according to this group of norm, say, you know, if people they are going to a place and they see people throw away garbage and they are so dirty, they are going to just throw away the garbage, okay? If they happen to have a what? Or if you if they go to a place so clean, they won't do it. So this will be <coughs> this group of norm, okay? Clear. So one's called what? What called what? Injunctive. No. Okay. So this will say, you know, people perception of what behavior are approved, disapproved by others. But then I think this, the one, this not from our book. But I think this one is more clear. Say, what people ought or not or not to do. Okay. People will do regardless the. Environment, okay. But this one again, this from our book, and this is not from our book. But I think this one is more clear. They say people will expect to do something according to the pattern, according to whatever they see in the environment. Okay. So actually, they have a research here. Okay. So uh, Reno and all, nineteen ninety three. Okay, he set up this research in three condition. Okay, one will be we call control group. Okay, that means for the participants, they will see for this condition. So they have a, they set them in participant in different three three different group. Okay, the first group people see just con con confident to see somebody just walk walking by the park. Okay, nothing. Do nothing. Okay, this one, the group in this group, the participant in this group, see people walk by and dropping a empty fast food bag. 
Okay, so drop in an empty fast food bag. So this one actually use they see people throw away the, the garbage. Okay, and this actually setting this as a descriptive norm condition. Remember what's this? This means they expect them to do whatever they see. This descriptive norm condition. And we will see what happened. Okay. Now this one they see a confederate, okay, picking up a little uh, fast food bag. So this one they see this one throw away and this one they see they are pick up. Okay, and this one they said the setting is uh injunctive norm condition. That means they want to test if people do what they ought to do, what they supposed to do regardless of the situation. Okay? So in after that, after that. All these participants will walk to their car. Okay, so if you are the if if you are have the experience driving the car, you know sometimes you see people put the you know the the flyer right some advertising in your windshield, in your windshield right, and that actually we consider that is somehow is garbage, right? So. It will be interesting to see how these three group people observe, observe, okay? No, observe how these three group people respond, right? How these three group people respond, okay? So now they say 37 to 38% of the control group, remember the control group, see, they, they see somebody walk by, do nothing, right? And 30 to 38% of them, um, littered, they throw away, regardless how clean the parking lot was, okay, regardless how clean the parking lot was, when they, so it means pe people have the nature, uh, around 37 to 38, like one third of the people maybe easily do this, just throw away, that's not my stuff anyway, right, and regardless how clean the parking lot, okay, the second group, remember, they see somebody drop an empty fast food bag, right? And they are the condition they want to see if they just do it. And they follow the condition of the parking lot. Okay, so actually, they give them two conditions. One half, the same thing here, okay? So one half of them go to the parking lot with already some garbage. Some go to the place it is clean and this one say they all the same doesn't matter either clean or not clean about 37 to 38 percent they just throw away okay this group is very interesting they say they reduce okay remember they supposed to be follow what people do right so then when they see uh, the confederate throw away this group supposed to be throw away right Okay, so they say the littering was reduced in the clean lot condition, but it was not reduced in the litter lot condition. Okay, so this one, if they see the parking lot is clean, they're less likely to throw away. But then if they already not clean, then they are going to throw away the, the paper. Okay, so that this group. This group, remember, this one is for the injunctive. That means people will do if they, what they, whatever they're supposed to, right? And remember, they see somebody pick up the stuff, right? Okay, so they see this group people, little list of all, okay? Uh, regardless, they are clean or not clean. So these people, they, they just do what they're supposed to do regardless the the parking lot, the cleanness of the parking lot. They're interested? Okay, so look at this chart. Okay, so this color, okay, looks like red here, but looks like orange. But anyway, so this uh, reddish color, okay, and then the blue color. So this is mean the clean parking lot, and this mean littered parking lot, okay? And you can see for the uh, control group, control group, 
they all they just throw that piece of advertising regardless the situation okay now this group descriptive let's see somebody throw right so this group if they are very clean they they were less likely to leader but they are already leadered they more likely deter themselves they will say well the parking lot is not clean anyway okay how about this one injunctive group that means they suppose they will do what they're supposed to regardless the condition so you can see they keep clean regardless the leader or clean parking lot it's very interesting right it's very interesting right okay so one called injunctive and one called descriptive clear injunctive that means people do what they ought to do that and this will be people do they follow the pattern okay now when we when we talk about the behavior change especially we use the um uh descriptive norm right remember descriptive norm is what people follow other people right people follow the the pattern right and so they say be aware the boom boom boomerang effect be aware the boomerang effect okay so that means so when they when they do this research they show they show actually you know the the participants you know for example they are we, we, we always worry about how much people use internet, how much people drink for college student, right? And here say, if you show them the norm, show them what people uh, do, the pattern, they can be a, have a downside, okay? So here, so if you show them, so you, you show them the, the statistics, say, looks like college student average, they drink uh, this much per week or they use this internet per week okay well original you you kind of want to show them a, a model for them to get an insight and then hopefully they will less likely to do that well the problem is you find the participant actually increase the drinking and electricity use if they find themselves use less than the norm okay so it's oh then looks like I'm not bad and actually then they'll make them want to do more. So this is called um, some kind of uh, boomerang boomerang effect. Okay, so let's say this is uh, can be a problem. So to avoid this, research should include the injunctive norm. Okay, so that means encourage them, give them positive feedback to those who are already engaged in positive behavior and then so just give them say wow you do this supposed to wow you are so good you are so good rather than show them kind of like what other people do negatively right so actually this can prevent the bromance effect that result from rely on descriptive norm that makes sense interesting right okay other way people use to influence people they have a couple you know two here i think maybe you hear from previously lecture or our other chapter uh, or you are not but it's okay let me introduce you here about this concept one is called foot in the door technique what's mean foot in the door technique this will be saying if you want ask people favor okay then you maybe ask them um, to start from smaller one first you know you want ask them a big favor don't ask them that much ask them the small smaller one first and once they agree with you the small one they have a tendency to say okay for the bigger one okay so for example if i ask students say well can we have a um take, teach you know sometimes i i may have a one class i have to go to conference so i won't able to teach so then i will tell students 
can we have a, a five extra minutes every time when we finish so we can make up for the for the time I'm going to absent from the class. It's five minutes, no big deal, right? So students will tend to say, sure, right? And then next time I will say, how about 10 minutes? They'll be say, sure. And then if one time I'm just saying, wow, well, it's too much troublesome. Can we just, can you just, guys, just give me one hour and I'll finish. Well, since they already say sure for five minutes, 10 sure for 10 minutes, maybe they'll be more likely to say sure for if I ask a big favor, say, I need one extra hour from you guys, right? Okay, and the research here also show if they want to ask for the volunteer, okay, uh, to promote the volunteer to um, to put a, a big ugly long sign, promotion safe driving, okay, um, if they ask them, you know, because it's ugly sign, People may not want to do that. It's embarrassed, right? So when they ask this, too big, fur, only 70% say yes. But if you first ask them, you know, agree to put a, a small sign in their window, in their window, small sign in the window, okay? And later, see, they already agree to, to put, to have you put their sign in their window, smaller, then more likely agree to put a big ugly one in the yard. That makes sense? And it's called what? Foot in the door. That means you ask small favor first and then ask big one. Okay. The another hand, you can do something called door in the face. Does anybody have been be slammed the door in the face? You know, that is too much, right? And so let's say, if you want to ask people as a little bit smaller favor, then maybe you can ask a big request first. And they will say, oh, no, 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 I cannot do it. And then you say, well, can you just ask, can you just have this small favor? So for example, for my example, I can tell students, um, I need you guys have one hour for me so I can teach to make up for my uh, absent next month. Student will say, I, we don't have time. I don't have time for that one hour. Right? I need to work, I need to do this, I do this. Then I will say, how about five minutes per class session? Five minutes. They will say, sure. They will say, sure. Right? So this is interesting. So if you want... For example, you want people make a, a, a volunteer, ask them to, to be a volunteer, you may uh, tell them, hey, can you, we really need a volunteer, can you make a long-term commitment? We really need that. And you'll see people kind of start to say, oh, we don't have time. And then you'll say, oh, can I have a, just one afternoon, you know, I need a volunteer uh, to take the children to the room. Just, just, just one, one, one afternoon rather than long term. Is any, can anybody help me just for that one afternoon? You may see a lot of hands go up because what? they feel sorry to say no to you for the big one. So they, they will tend to uh, agree with a small one. Okay, so these are two kinds. One is called what? Foot in the door. That one is what? To ask you to ask big one, you, you, you ask them small one first and then they're more likely to act agree with the big one okay and this one door in the face that's me you are you you ask the big one first and then they they was they may say no and then you ask small one okay very interesting right okay now uh, another one people use this H is not very past good one though uh called program uh programdas programdas okay that actually um, a lot of uh, native people in the in the in the in the, society, in the world they use this uh, propaganda. It's a deliberate, systematic attempt to ad, uh, advance a cause by manipulating mass attitude 
and behavior often through misleading or emotional charge information. And for example, healer create an elaborate system for propaganda based on hatred of the Jewish. You know, they tell German people say we, we need to purify uh, the the race and then you know we need more space for the country so you know the Jewish is take our space and they, they make our gene as complicated, right? So they use this to, to make people hate Jewish, right? And so this is propaganda, okay? Uh, per, uh, propaganda, right? So this actually is not a good one, but people, if they use it, you know that's a type, okay? P-R-O-P-A-G-A-N-D-E, propaganda, okay? Okay, now, conformity, also another form of conformity is called obedience. Obedience, especially sometimes we will request to obedience to authority. Okay, obedience to authority, okay? And obedience is a, a social norm <clears throat> that is value in every culture, right? <clears throat> You know, we 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 uh, you know encourage students to to follow your professor. You know, the student follow the teacher. You know, when you see the police, when police stop you, uh, if in the highway or a local way, you you just stop, don't do anything, and wait for them to come and tell you what they need, right? And that is the uh, the norm. We, re we, re we expect people to do, okay? It's called obedience, okay? Now, when, where, okay, you will obey. You will show your obedience, okay? Here say you simply can have people doing whatever they want all the time. It would result in chaos, right? So just because people in authority is not mean they always do the right thing, right? So um, so we have to, you know, that's why we have to study and then to see why and how and people they are obedient, show their obedience, right? Okay. Now, if we show obedience, okay, uh, quite often. You know, because we learn it. Okay, if you use the psychoanalysis theory, we call it our super ego, right? So we learn it. For example, we will learn to, we will know we stop in the red light, then we prepare to go on yellow light, and then we free to go on green light, okay? So this is supposed to, we, we supposed to be followed, right? Even if the cop and, you know, even no police there to try to take picture or you know catch you or something. You just do whatever you're supposed to, right? But then of course can be sometimes can be a uh, have some issue if the people give you the order is not dry one, right? Okay, so actually they are very. Uh, famous research around about this area is Stanley Miagra. Okay, the research, and I show the link here. So because I don't think I'm allowed to show this in YouTube when I'm making YouTube. This is from YouTube. So, but I put the link here. When you you have this PowerPoint in your uh, Moodle. Okay, so when you open this PowerPoint, you just click here. Then you can you can see um, that that mere ground research, okay. And then what is mere ground research, okay? Now the research actually they, they recruit the volunteer, okay. They told the student, you know, we will pay you. Do you want to be a volunteer? They didn't tell them volunteer for what, okay. So when student come to the lab, okay, they will have them pick. And you, some people pick as a learner, some people pick as a teacher, okay? So then what they do, they tell teachers, say, you know, you are going to test in those learners, your student uh, a, a vocabulary, okay? And then if they are 
uh, answer wrong, then you have to give them electrical shock. Okay, and they even have this teacher experience how electrical shock feel like, so they know it's hurt. Okay, then when then when the uh, research start to start it, then the they are in different rooms. So actually, the teacher don't see the learner. Okay, so they are through the the microphone. So then the teacher student acting the teacher say a word or some questions and then have a other side to answer right and then they start with a very small amount you know body for the electrical power and then if they are not correctly you know they will keep 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 push push more 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 and the research if you change to watch that video you will see you know when when the teacher heard the the learner start to scream and say, let me out, let me out, let me out, it's hurt, it's hurt. Actually, quite a few teachers, actually stop and ask the researchers, say, can I stop? The point is they set up this researcher, they wear a white coat and looks with authority figure. Okay, and they also looks like very cold or you know, cold. So then they will tell the 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 teacher say, "You just keep going. You just keep going." Okay. And when when the volume of electrical shock get higher and higher, more people try to quit. More people try to quit. But actually, um, because the auto authority figure there, so actually the research is show. You about two third people actually follow. They keep follow. They not stop. Okay. Well, that is pretty much the um, the research. Okay. Then uh, if you are the person part of this research, what what did you what are you going to do? You know, are you going to follow or you are not follow? Okay. Well, the people. And just background information, actually, those learners, they not really get electrical shock. No, they don't really get it, okay? But the teacher didn't know. The teacher didn't know. So then um, they believe they are suffering, okay? Of course, that research, you cannot really hurt other people. But then they just want to see how people respond with the authority figure, okay? Well, so you can see, actually, um, quite... Quite many, quite a few people, actually a lot of people, we say two-third people, they are follow. Okay, so uh, most people, actually, most meal grant participants, actually, they are um, get a pressure by authority figure, okay? And so they they want to stop, but they cannot stop. And, 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 and many of them even not stop, okay? So uh, they said the average maximum shock deliver was 306 volts. It's pretty high, right? And 62.5% of the participant age went up to 450 Wow, shock, okay? The average is here, but 62.5% get to here, okay? It's 80% of the participants continue to give the shot even after the learner cry out similar, uh, similarly in pain, say his heart was uh, bothering them. Okay, so even this, still, about 80% still keep going, right? Well, of course, here, just give the notes here, none of them really get hurt. But then, you know, the teacher just from the, the, the song, they they get experience kind of like, feel like they get hurt. Okay, so now, let's think about the role of normative social inference, right? Remember, normative social inference means you want to get acceptance. You want to get acceptance, right? So the reason they do this because what the situation is so confused. You know, they just was signed. They just signed to to want to be a volunteer in the lab. They don't really know what research, right? And they 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 pick the pick the the the, 
the, the car and say they are learner or they are teacher. So the situation actually is very confused. So they, they don't really know what's going on there, right? And then uh, they are unclear how to define what is going on. So they just follow the order and follow the expert, follow the expert, right? And because they are authority figure, right? Okay, so it's difficult for them to abandon their norm for three reasons. Why they keep going? Why? Because first one, because they are, they happen so fast. They don't even have them have time to think. That's why they keep keep follow, right? And also, uh, the shock level is from small amount and then gradually increase, right? So remember, we just say that you know the foot in the door, right? You they you they ask a small favor, and if you say yes, and then you tend to able to accept a little bit higher and higher and higher request, right? So that is happen, and they they start with small amount of uh, shock, so they think maybe not maybe it's okay, but actually I increase more, right? And they get trapped, right? And then they are loss of feeling of personal responsibility. Why? If something happened, whose fault? Those people will why call. It's not even us. We just do that. We just come here to help for the research. So they, they have that mentality say, it's not my responsibility. So when people show the obedience, quite often they they have this as their backup. They will say, well, I'm obey, and if something goes wrong, that's whatever you give the order, that's your fault, not my fault. Okay, so what if we want to run away from this situation to disobey? What can be a way? Okay, first of all, if the people will white coat, left the room. If people will white coat, left the room, they find if that case, people less likely to obey. Okay, they were more likely to disobey. Okay, or when the victim was in the same room. So when they are in the same room and you give them a shot and you see they get hurt, they were less likely to obey. Okay, now when the experimenter issue conflict demand, so if you have two people, they all wear white coat and one say, just let them stop. Another one say, keep going because you hear different voice. Then people will more likely to stop, okay? Then when the person uh, ordered them to continue was a uh, ordinary people, okay? So people will, <clears throat> white coat say, well, I'll be step out for a little bit. Hey, number five, number five, can you, can you help me to ask them to keep going? Well, who going to lesson, right? So that you can think about if teacher have to go somewhere and then if they ask one of students to in charge the class, student may not lesson, right? Okay, and then, or, you know, um, when, one of, when one of the participants start to say, no, I'm not going to keep going, then other people will tend to not keep going anymore. Okay, so this is the the couple reason maybe will lead into disobedience, right? Did it make sense? Is that possible, right? Okay, so this actually is a chart, right? So there, if the here the uh the here the standard one, the one we just you know the design, you know the white coat people just say they say keep going, keep going, keep going. You say people this this. Uh, their obedience rate is very high, right? That one is two other teachers refuse to continue, right? So you have, you know, the people acting as teachers, they are, we can say they are participants acting as teacher. If you have two of them refuse to continue and you can see the obedience rate drop down, right? How about this one? If the uh, experimenter left the room and they have uh, other you know, other people ask one of the participants give the order, and you can see the the obedience obedience rate also low down to this one twenty, right? And then participants choose their own level of shocking to give. You can oh just choose your whatever, and people will decide. They will either do very low volume or they won't do it. 
okay so do you think that's that's very interesting right okay and i think that's all i have and this is the chapter of what conformity hopefully you find this chapter is interesting okay so this is a four part here okay so if you are interested and you miss the three part or one of the part you can go back to review them the good thing put in youtube so whenever you are interested to 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 listen one more time then you can always go back okay so thank you for your attention and thank you you spend the time with me okay so please stay healthy and stay safe okay and again if you are interested about this channel feel free to to you know subscribe push the button okay and then um i will make other video in another time and if you are my student make sure they have a quiz there wait for you to take it okay so don't forget uh join the discussion in our moodle and then finish your quiz okay so everybody stay safe and see you next time bye bye